There's a quiet moment that comes when you look up at the night sky and realize that everything you've ever known, every city, mountain, ocean and person, exists on one fragile world circling a rather ordinary star. It's a feeling both humbling and liberating. For all our technology and imagination, our perspective is still deeply human. We see the world in kilometers and miles, seconds and years. We're wired for the immediate, the next sunrise, the next horizon, the next heartbeat. But the universe operates on scales so immense that even our language begins to collapse under its weight. When we talk about the true scale of the universe, we're not just talking about numbers, distances and sizes that dwarf comprehension, but about perspective itself. It's about how we fit into a story that began billions of years before us and stretches billions beyond. To grasp the universe, we must first unlearn our instinct for smallness. We must let go of the idea that big means mountains or planets, because in cosmic terms, even our entire solar system would fit comfortably inside a single pixel of the observable sky. And yet here we are, conscious beings made of atoms that once burned in the hearts of stars, daring to measure infinity. Let's start small, with home. Earth, our cradle and our sanctuary is about 12,742 kilometers in diameter. To us, it feels vast. Crossing oceans takes hours by plane, days by ship. But in space terms, Earth is a grain of sand adrift in a cosmic desert. Our nearest neighbor, the Moon, is about 384,400 kilometers away. That's a distance so great that light, moving at 300,000 kilometers per second, takes just over one second to get there. For Apollo astronauts, it took three days. Beyond the Moon lies the Sun, 150 million kilometers from Earth. Light from the Sun takes about eight minutes and 20 seconds to reach us. That means every sunrise you see is already eight minutes old. When you feel its warmth, you're touching the past. The solar system extends much farther than the sun's familiar glow. Neptune orbits at about 4.5 billion kilometers away, where sunlight is faint and the cold is unimaginable. Beyond Neptune lies the Kuiper Belt, home to Pluto and other icy remnants, and still farther, the distant Oort Cloud, a spherical halo of comets that may stretch nearly a light year from the sun. If we imagine the solar system as the size of a coin, the nearest star, Proxima Centauri, 4.24 light years away, would be another coin sitting several hundred kilometers away. Between them, emptiness. We've already sent spacecraft to the edges of this vastness. Voyager 1, launched in 1977, is now over 24 billion kilometers from Earth. Even at 17 kilometers per second, it would take more than 70,000 years to reach the nearest star. So if we struggle to leave the solar system, what hope do we have of measuring the universe itself? The answer lies not in travel, but in light, the messenger that crosses cosmic gulfs and brings us the story of everything. Light is the universe's measuring stick. It moves at a constant speed, and because nothing travels faster, it defines the limits of what we can know. When we measure distances in light years, we're not just describing space, we're describing time. A light year is about 9.46 trillion kilometers, the distance light travels in one Earth year. That's a number so enormous that it loses meaning without context. But light years give us a map of both distance and history. Look up at Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky. You're seeing it as it was 8.6 years ago. The light from Betelgeuse, a red giant nearing the end of its life, began its journey about 650 years ago before telescopes existed. When we gaze at galaxies millions of light years away, we're seeing them as they were millions of years ago. The further we look, the further back in time we go. This is the magic and the strangeness of cosmic scale. The night sky is not a static picture, but a living archive. Each photon carries a timestamp from when it left its source, and together they tell the story of a universe in motion. Beyond a certain distance, the light we receive has been stretched by the expansion of space itself, a cosmic redshift that lets astronomers measure not only how far away galaxies are, but how fast the universe is growing. Through light, we can trace our way to the very edge of the observable cosmos. The true scale of the universe is not just written in kilometers or years, 
it is written in the language of light and time, a dialogue between what exists and what we can still see. Our sun is just one star among roughly 400 billion in the Milky Way galaxy, a vast spiral island of light stretching 100,000 light years across. Even moving at the speed of light, it would take a photon 100,000 years to cross from one edge to the other. If you could look at the Milky Way from far away, you'd see its graceful spiral arms, like the whirls of a seashell, glowing with the combined light of countless suns. Between those arms are vast stretches of interstellar dust and gas, the raw material from which new stars and planets form. Our solar system sits quietly in one of these spiral arms, about 27,000 light years from the galactic center. At that center lies a supermassive black hole known as Sagittarius A Wung, containing the mass of four million suns. Around it, stars orbit like sparks caught in a cosmic whirlpool, moving at thousands of kilometers per second. Even within our galaxy, distances are staggering. The nearest star system, Alpha Centauri, is over four light years away. The nearest major galaxy, Andromeda, lies 2.5 million light years beyond that. Between them is a gulf so vast that on average, galaxies are separated by distances measured not in millions, but in tens of millions of light years. Our galaxy is immense beyond human comprehension. And yet, in cosmic terms, it's just one grain of light in a sea of galaxies. Zoom out again, and the Milky Way no longer stands alone. It is part of a galactic neighborhood known as the Local Group, a cluster of more than 80 galaxies bound together by gravity. The Local Group spans about 10 million light years, anchored by two giants, our Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy, Dromeda. In roughly 4.5 billion years, those two great spirals will collide and merge, forming a new, larger galaxy, a cosmic slow dance that will take hundreds of millions of years to complete. Stars will pass through each other, planets will survive mostly unscathed, but the night sky will change forever. Beyond the local group lies the Virgo supercluster, home to tens of thousands of galaxies, and beyond that, the Laniakea supercluster, a sprawling web of galactic filaments over 500 million light years wide, an enormous structure that contains our entire cosmic neighborhood. Each galaxy in these structures is itself a universe of stars, planets, and perhaps life. Each cluster is like a city, and the superclusters are the continents of the cosmic landscape. What we once thought of as empty space is in fact alive with structure, filaments, sheets, and voids, forming a kind of cosmic foam that spans the observable universe. The universe, when seen at this scale, resembles a vast web of light, galaxies strung along invisible threads of dark matter, the unseen skeleton of the cosmos. At the largest scales, gravity and dark matter weave the universe into a structure both intricate and immense. Galaxies are not scattered randomly, but form along filaments that stretch across hundreds of millions of light years, connecting massive clusters at their intersections. Between these filaments lie enormous cosmic voids, vast empty regions of space where almost nothing exists. Some are hundreds of millions of light years wide. If the Milky Way sat at the center of one, we would see almost no galaxies in our night sky. This cosmic web is the fingerprint of the universe's origin. Tiny fluctuations in the density of the early universe, quantum ripples magnified by cosmic inflation, eventually grew into the galaxies, clusters, and filaments we see today. Over billions of years, gravity pulled matter together, sculpting this magnificent tapestry. When astronomers map the universe, they see this web emerging in stunning detail. Strands of light spanning unimaginable distances, separated by oceans of darkness. It is the universe's architecture, the skeleton of creation. And yet, the web we can observe is only part of the picture. Beyond the limits of observation, the pattern may continue forever, extending into regions we will never reach, filled with galaxies whose light will never touch our eyes. At this scale, size becomes something almost philosophical. The universe isn't just large, it's structured, dynamic, and deeply connected. Every galaxy, including our own, is part of a vast cosmic fabric stretching across billions of light years. 
When we look deep into space, we are also looking deep into time. The most distant light we can see has traveled for billions of years across the expanding fabric of the cosmos. Telescopes like Hubble and James Webb peer so far that their cameras capture galaxies as they appeared more than 13 billion years ago, when the universe was still young, less than a billion years after the Big Bang. But there is a limit. Beyond a certain distance, the universe becomes opaque. We can only see back to the time when light first broke free, when the universe cooled enough for atoms to form and photons to travel freely. This boundary is called the Cosmic Microwave Background, CMB, a faint glow that fills all of space, the afterglow of creation itself. That light has been traveling for 13.8 billion years, but because space itself has expanded during that time, the edge of the observable universe isn't 13.8 billion light years away. It's much farther, about 46 billion light years in every direction. In other words, the diameter of the observable universe is roughly 93 billion light years. And that's only what we can see. Beyond that horizon lies the unobservable universe, regions of space that exist, but whose light has not yet had time to reach us. The universe could be far larger, perhaps infinite, with galaxies stretching endlessly beyond our cosmic bubble. So when we talk about the size of the universe, we're really talking about the size of our visible patch, a tiny window on an incomprehensibly vast hole. When Edwin Hubble measured the distances to galaxies in the 1920s, he noticed something remarkable. The farther a galaxy was, the faster it seemed to be moving away. This wasn't because galaxies were speeding through space like bullets, it was because space itself was expanding, stretching in every direction, carrying galaxies along with it. Imagine dots drawn on a balloon. As the balloon inflates, the dots move away from each other, not because they're moving on their own, but because the surface itself is expanding. The universe works in much the same way, except it's three-dimensional, and crucially, there is no center or edge. Every point sees every other point moving away. As space expands, light traveling through it stretches as well. Its wavelength increases, shifting toward the red end of the spectrum, the phenomenon known as cosmic redshift. This redshift is the evidence of expansion, and by measuring it, astronomers can trace how fast the universe has grown over time. But here's the twist. The expansion is not slowing down. It's accelerating, driven by something mysterious, a repulsive force known as dark energy. We don't yet know what dark energy is. It could be an inherent property of space or a new field in physics we've yet to understand. But whatever it is, it dominates the cosmos, shaping the future of everything. In billions of years, distant galaxies will slip beyond our cosmic horizon as space expands faster than light can travel. Future astronomers may see only a lonely, dark sky, their view of the cosmos fading into nothing. The universe isn't just big, it's getting bigger every second. To grasp the scale of the universe, we must also grasp its age. The universe is about 13.8 billion years old, a span so vast that even our planet, at 4.5 billion years, seems like a late addition to the story. For most of that time, there were no stars, no galaxies, no light. Just expanding darkness, slowly cooling, until gravity and time wove matter into the first luminous structures. The light from those early stars and galaxies still travels toward us today. When we observe them through our telescopes, we are seeing them as they were billions of years ago, flickers of the distant past, still crossing the void. Our present moment is a thin slice of a cosmic story billions of years deep. The Milky Way itself is an ancient structure, more than 13 billion years old, and the atoms that make up your body were forged in generations of long dead stars. Every breath you take contains particles that have drifted through the galaxy for eons. Every molecule of water has been part of countless worlds and life forms before you. So when we speak of the true scale of the universe, we're not just talking about size, we're talking about time, a scale so immense that even eternity feels inadequate to describe it. The cosmos is not just vast in space, it is vast in duration. It stretches backward into an almost unimaginable past and forward into a future that will likely outlast every star, every galaxy, and perhaps even time itself. 
What lies beyond the observable universe? The truth is, we don't know. The universe could extend infinitely in all directions, or it could wrap around itself like the surface of a higher dimensional sphere. It might even repeat, forming endless copies of galaxies, and perhaps even of us. The observable universe is defined by what light has had time to reach us since the Big Bang. Anything farther away remains hidden, because its light is still on the journey. But the fact that we can't see beyond doesn't mean there's nothing there. Most cosmologists believe the universe continues, far past our horizon, far past anything we could ever detect. If the universe is indeed infinite, then somewhere unimaginably far away, the same physical laws might have created another galaxy almost identical to ours. Somewhere, another star like the Sun, another planet like Earth, maybe even another version of you, wondering about the same questions. Infinity has a strange way of folding the mind back on itself. The human brain isn't built to hold infinity. It's built for survival, for counting harvests and horizons. But the universe is under no obligation to fit within our comprehension. It simply is vast, ancient and continuing. When we talk about the true scale of the universe, we reach a point where numbers lose meaning. Beyond a few billion light years, language starts to break. The only tools left are wonder and humility. We tend to think of the night sky as timeless, stars burning eternally, galaxies wheeling forever in silence. But the universe has a story, and every story has an ending. In the far future, billions of years from now, the stars will begin to die. The youngest, hottest ones will fade first, followed by the longer-lived suns like ours. Eventually, only red embers will remain, faint, fading points in an ever-expanding darkness. As dark energy continues to stretch space, galaxies will drift apart until even light can no longer bridge the gaps. The cosmic web will unravel. The observable universe, from the perspective of any given point, will shrink to nothing but a single island galaxy surrounded by infinite night. Trillions of years later, even those stars will cool into black dwarfs. Matter itself may decay. The universe will grow quiet, a cold, diffuse sea of subatomic whispers. This may sound bleak, but it's also profound. Everything we see now, the brilliant galaxies, the blazing stars, the shimmering nebulae, is part of a fleeting, luminous chapter in cosmic history. We are alive in the universe's age of light, a brief moment when stars burn and life can look up to see them. To live now is to exist during one of the rarest eras imaginable, when the universe is still visible, vibrant, and filled with wonder. We began with a simple question. What is the true scale of the universe? Now we can answer, but not with a single number. The universe is 93 billion light years across at least. It's 13.8 billion years old at least. It contains two trillion galaxies and more stars than grains of sand on every beach of Earth. And still that may only be the smallest part of an infinite whole. But the true scale of the universe isn't just its size, it's what that size does to us. It changes how we think, how we feel, how we see ourselves. It reminds us that we are part of something vast, not separate from the cosmos, but expressions of it, made from its dust and shaped by its laws. The same gravity that binds galaxies together holds us to the ground. The same atoms that fuel the stars course through our blood. When you look up at the night sky, you are seeing the past, but also, in a very real sense, seeing yourself. You are made of that light. You are the universe, briefly aware of its own existence. And that awareness, fragile, temporary, human, may be the rarest phenomenon in all of space. So perhaps the universe's greatest wonder is not its immensity, but the fact that something as small as us can even begin to understand it. That we can look into the dark, measure its depths, and whisper into the silence. We see you. Because in the end, to know the scale of the universe is to feel both infinitesimal and infinite, a paradox only consciousness can hold. The cosmos may be vast beyond measure, but our curiosity stretches just as far.